Hey, it's Sting Knight. In today's video, I'll be comparing all the tank PvP classes in FF14. This will help anyone watching decide which tank they want to pick up. With that said, let's jump right in. Starting off, we have Paladin, which is your typical sword and shield class. Its main GCD is the Royal Authority combo. Nothing significant here. The last attack of this ability will turn your GCD into a different ability called the Atonement, which is a pretty high potent skill that also recover a decent amount of HP. We have Confetia, which is a range AoE attack. And this does about 8,000 potency and it afflicts the target with Sacred Claim. Basically is a debuff on the enemy. And if you hit them with any attacks, you heal about 2,000 potency for each attack. We have a Shield Bash. Uh, it's just a stun ability, 4,000 potency. And it also turns our GCD into Atonement once again. We'll be using this to chain our combo. We have Intervene, which is your dash for you to engage onto the enemies, rushes to the target, and it also grants Atonement. So we have Guardian, which is uh, a dash that you dash towards a teammate only. So you you cannot dash towards the enemy with this and once you dash your teammate you cover for them you basically take all the damage they will take for 10 seconds so be careful when you use this because you might take too much damage by mistake and you just die because of it holy showtron which is your dr ability it also gives you a nice barrier equivalent to 12,000 potency and if the barrier doesn't get destroyed then you also do 2,000 potency plus 50 percent of the barrier's remaining potency to your to your surrounding your lemon break phoenix grants you the hollow ground effect which is your pve uh invuln it makes you invulnerable to any attacks and it also grants any nearby teammates 50 percent damage reduction and it also turns your limit break into blade of faith and if you combine this with uh, confetia which grants the sacred claim debuff on the enemy with the sacred claim debuff then you use blade of faith it does extra potency damage to the enemy target as well as healing an extra bit more hp and it just changed from blade of faith into blade of truth and then into blade of valor they're all just uh aoe abilities range aoe abilities in terms of difficulty i think paladin is the easiest tank to play in fact it's the easiest melee job to play overall in my opinion because if you can see the abilities there isn't a lot that you need to understand so you can pretty much just pick it up read the abilities a little bit and then you're good to go and generally there is not a lot of pressure for a paladin player to do damage because well it is the tank with the least amount of damage so people let's just say they don't have high expectation of you to do good damage but if played properly you can use your phoenix to counter stuff like like a dragoon's ultimate like a dragoon's limit break and completely nullify his attack pretty much with your uh hollow ground effect as well as giving your teammates 50 percent damage reduction to save your teammates so you can do certain outplays like that with Paladin, which is not possible on any other class. So our combo goes something like this. You pop your Shotron, you want to use a Confetia, and then you dash in, use your Atonement, stun them, Atonement again, and then dash again for another Atonement. And that's pretty much it. Nothing fancy about it. It's pretty basic. For is pros and cons. Starting with the pros, it has high mobility with your two dashes uh, onto enemy targets and a guardian of ability which you can cover your teammates um, that you can dash away from a fight. Uh, you also have decent sustain with already healing effects, your sacred claim debuff from Confetia, your limit break that turns into blade of faith also heals a bunch and then your atonement which you will use quite often also heals for a decent chunk as well you have a very strong defensive limit break your phoenix gives you hollow ground as we mentioned gives you invulnerability nothing damages you as well as giving your teammates 50 percent damage reduction for 10 seconds which is absolutely huge especially if you're timing it well to go against certain enemies a big limit break abilities you can also cover your teammate with your guardian so you take all their damage if you cover for a teammate four is con it really just does does less damage compared to the, all the other tanks. He just does the least amount of damage possible. Even if you play the best of your ability, you won't do as much damage as a Warrior, Dark Knight, or Gunbreaker. Moving on to Warrior, we have a Storm's Path combo as his main GCD. Nothing really worth mentioning except the last one that deals 100% uh, of the damage that has HP. So you get 5,000 heal from this. And then you have your main engage tool, Primal Ren, which has 8,000 potency. And if it's used with your limit break, it does 16,000 potency. It is an extremely powerful tool to engage because not only does it stun the target you're jumping onto, it also stun anybody around it, 
you have your onslaught, which is your other engage ability. But this time you only rushes to a single target. That's about 5,000 potency. Uh, the more HP you have, however, the more damage you would do with this ability up to 5,000. And it also consumes 10% of current HP when executed. So keep that in mind. Orogeny, which is a AoE ability that you want to use pretty much right after you engage because it reduces the target's damage dealt by 10%. So it is not a flat damage reduction. It is you have to hit the target with this ability for it to be effective. And it also costs 20% of current HP when executed. So keep that in mind. Blotta instantly draws target to your side. So this ability basically drags the target towards you. It's a range CC ability that drags the enemy target towards you and it applies heavy to them so they cannot really move. They can still use abilities, but they cannot really move. Blood wetting, which is your core ability that you need to be using before you engage. It turns 100% of your damage dealt into HP. It lasts for about 10 seconds. It also creates a barrier that absorbs about 10% of your maximum HP. We have our Primal Scream, which is your Limit Break. When you use this ability, you do damage in like a frontal AoE cone in front of you, uh, making your enemies unable to use Guard. And then it grants you inner release and throw of battle, which is just buffs, which turns your Primal Rend, doubling its damage, as well as Chaotic Cyclone, doubling its damage as well. It also turns your main GCD Storm's Path combo into Fell Cleave. It does a huge amount of damage of 12,000 potency. So once you have this effect, you basically just pop off and go crazy. So your combo goes something like you start off with Blood Wedding, and then you engage with Primal Rand. And you also want to use your Onslaught immediately. And then you just smash Chaotic Clone and Orangini. And then you may want to pull back and then drag your target towards you to further CC them and take them down. In terms of difficulty, I would say Warrior is the second easiest tank to play. It is a little bit more complex than Paladin because of the fact that you are using your HP as a resource when you use some of your abilities, which sometimes can put you in a tight spot. As well as your Limit Break requires you to be in your enemy's face to maximize its effect. And when your blood writing is a down, you become really squishy because you don't have the heal anymore and you don't have a flat damage reduction like Paladin does. So to sum things up with pros and cons, uh, starting with pros, it has decent mobility with your primal riders engaged as well as onslaught, which is just a dash and your Blood Rider allows you to turn 100% of damage dealt into health. You also have a powerful Limit Break. It allows you to have huge amount of DPS. You also have really strong crowd control with your Primal Rand, your AoE stun, and then you have your Blota, which drags the target towards you, which no other class has. So moving to his cons. Some of your skill consumes health, which is not that big of a deal. You don't really notice it. Your Onslaught costs about 10% of current HP when executed. Your Orogony costs 20% of current HP when executed. So you want to keep an eye out when you use these abilities. So your health is not too low. We're also Blood Wedding reliant on this ability, which is your main survivability tool. When you do not have this, you become quite squishy. You want to make sure to play around Blood Wedding. So when your Blood Wedding is off cooldown, you use this and then you want to get out of a fight usually and then wait for your Blood Wedding to come back and then you go in again. Moving on to Dark Knight, which is a class that uses Greatsword as his main weaponry. We have his main GCD Soul Eater combo, which the last GCD version converts 100% damage dealt into HP, similar to Warrior. We have Quietus, which does 8,000 potency to all nearby targets and it absorbs 100% of damage dealt as HP. So this is a healing ability that is very strong, especially if you engage in the middle of, a, of the enemy. Once you lose a little bit of HP and you pop this, because you know they're going to keep focusing you, and then you can heal to the max pretty much. So if you hit five people in a row, that's five times eight. So that's about 4,000 potency of healing. Extremely powerful, so use this ability when you're low HP. Shadowbringer. So this is something interesting about Dark Knight. It uses its HP as a resource for some of its abilities. This ability does 6,000 potency in a straight line in front of you, and it costs 12,000 HP, which is about 20% of your health. And it turns your main GCD into Blood Spiller, which does 6,000 potency, but it increases up to 12,000 as your HP decrease at a maximum value of 25% HP. So the lower your HP you have, the more damage you will do with this Blood Spiller ability. We also have Plunge, which is your dash. So this ability allows you to have resets. So if you dash to a target, does about 2,000 potency damage and afflicts the target with Soul Survivor. And if this target dies, it basically heals our HP and MP by 20%, as well as decreasing the target's healing ability by 20%. So if we're on a roll, we kill this guy, boom, and then it resets, we dash on the target, he dies, boom, and then he dies, and then you keep dashing, dashing nonstop. A little bit like Genji Ultimate in Overwatch. We have our Blackest Knight, which is a barrier mitigation ability up to 8,000. So you just take absolutely no damage if it's less than 8,000. And then, and once this ability gets popped, it removes the requirement to consume your HP when you use Shadowbringer. So you basically can use Shadowbringer for free, which turns into Blood Spiller for free without using any HP. So this is an ability you will use quite often, pretty much off cooldown if you're in a fight. Salted Earth, 
is an AoE pull ability that drags all the enemy nearby straight to you. And it does about 2000 potency each second for over 10 seconds. It also gradually restores your HP and reduce damage taken by 20% while standing in this uh, salted earth pool. So when you're fighting, you make sure you want to stay inside the circle. Now, something interesting is your ultimate. It does 10,000 potency to enemies in front of you and behind you in a straight line. And the higher your HP is, the more damage you would do up to 2,000, 20,000 potency. And basically what it does is it reduces your HP to one HP and you cannot die for 10 seconds no matter what is hitting you. It also absorbs 100% of weapon skill damage dealt as HP. So your sustain increases massively with this ultimate on. And if you combine this with your Salted Earth, you're gonna heal a lot in the middle of a fight. Salt and Darkness is basically straight after Salted Earth, you can use Salt and Darkness. It binds the enemy as well as give them like a damage over time. So your combo goes something like, you wanna use your the Blackest Knight first and then you wanna dash in with Plunge. And then use your Shadowbringer that turns your main GCD into Blood Spiller. And then you want to pull them in with your Salted Earth. And at this point, your HP is probably really low. And then use your Quietus to fully heal up. In terms of difficulty, I would say Dark Knight is the second hardest out of the other tanks. I would say it's a little bit easier than Gunbreaker. Only for the fact that there are less buttons to press. On Gunbreaker, you just smash a lot of buttons. None of these are necessarily that difficult. But just out of all the tanks itself, I would say Dark Knight is the second hardest. Because you have to kind of jiggle around with your own health. Although I will say, Dark Knight feels the tankiest out of all the tanks. So if you want to be the tankiest, then I recommend Dark Knight. It also does really good damage. On to its pros and cons. Starting with pros, Dark Knight actually does really good amount of damage. You won't really notice you're doing anything different compared to Warrior or Paladin. But if you just use your abilities, you just do a good amount of damage. If you're in the middle of a fight, um, your abilities just have a higher potency rate compared to the compared to Warrior and Paladin. I mean, Warrior can also do good damage, but it's a lot easier to do high damage with Dark Knight compared to Warrior. It has it has decent AoE CC with your Salted Earth, which drags everybody in. It's a quite a powerful tool when you engage onto the enemy. You also have your Salt and Darkness, which binds whoever you decide to. You have Great Sustain with your Blackest Knight, which is a barrier, absorbs 8,000 potency of damage. You have your Quietus, which uh, does 8,000 potency to all nearby targets. Any damage you dealt pretty much turns into health, as well as uh, with Salted Earth as well. You also slowly gain health and reduce your damage taken by 20%. And then there's also your Limit Break that just makes you uh, impossible to be killed and 100% of your weapon skill damage will turn into HP. Uh, two is Cons. Your, some of your skills consume a lot of health. Your Shadowbringer that you can constantly spam. You can actually spam this with no limit so you can see your health just goes down <laughs> straight to zero pretty much so that's something you want to keep an eye out for uh, i guess this is a con you do more damage with low hp with your core abilities like your blood spiller you do more damage the lower hp you are which is your main dps ability you'll be using this quite frequently so in a way you got to balance it out like you want to have good health or you want to have low health more damage or high health less damage because if you have low health you can easily be one tap or if you have high health you can survive more but you don't do as much damage finally for gunbreaker it uses a gunblade which is quite a unique style of weapon compared to most of the other other melee classes as main GCD is the solid barrel combo. Nothing really worth mentioning until the last one which turns your main GCD into burst strike which does a decent bit of damage of about 7000 potency. Its first weapon skill is the gnashing fan. So a lot of his abilities are chained with continuation so after you use gnashing fan your continuation turns into jaguar's rip and then abdominal tear and then eye gauge. So it also has an extra effect depending on which juncture you take. So use draw and juncture ability, which in the middle of a fight, you target a specific enemy. So if it's a DPS, it gives you DPS juncture, which just grants you more DPS potency of all your abilities. So if you target a tank, it will give you damage reduction abilities and barriers from your continuation abilities. And if it's a healer, it gives you extra heal. So it's fairly simple, but you tend to want to take tank just so you can survive it a little bit more. Because if you take DPS, you you're practically no different than a DPS, which you will die really fast. So if you want to go for that, then sure. But just keep in mind that you will die extremely quick. And the second weapon skill is double down, which you want to use pretty much as soon as possible. It's your highest potency ability besides your limit break. And it does is, is an AOE ability of 12,000 potency to everyone. It's actually quite powerful. So continuation is what we talked about. It basically just continues after using your gnashing fan and then continuation will turn into a different ability. You want to use it and then use gnashing fan again 
turns into a different ability as you can see in the bottom here we have rough defied which allows you to dash onto a target it also increases damage dealt and healing by 20 percent as well as increasing movement speed so you're just really fast and you deal a lot of damage and you heal a lot when you have rough and defied so you want to chain this uh, use it on the same target twice just know that it lasts for seven seconds so you don't want to overlap it draw in juncture which is what we just talked about you just usually want to target a tank so if there's no tank on the enemy team i would suggest targeting a healer if there's no healer then you have to go dps just keep in mind that you're basically another dps so don't go too ham your juncture cast which is your special ability depending on which juncture you pick so if you pick dps your juncture cast will turn into blasting zone which is a huge 10,000 potency ability if you pick tank you it will turn into nebula which is a 20 percent damage reduction and if you pick healer you will heal for 8,000 potency as well as having the regen ability for 12 seconds we also have relentless rush this ability is a little different than all the other melees and tanks so basically you want to use this ability on a target and you want to stick to them you don't want to use anything else you want to pop this and just stick to them and then every hit you do they get a relentless sharp no stack it stacks up to five times each stack uh makes the enemy take four percent more damage so up to a 20 percent of damage at the end it will pop and become terminal trigger and it just does 12,000 potency and it also stuns them and oftentimes you will catch enemy off guard with this because like they think you're sticking onto them following them for for whatever reason but you're not doing any damage and then boom next thing you know all the hp is gone we have a burst strike which is from your solid barrel or from using your uh, draw and juncture when you select a particular juncture and if you use burst strike it will turn into hyper velocity for your continuation we have savage claw which is just a follow-up from nursing fan wicked talon same again just a follow-up of nursing fan with nursing fan savage claw into wicked talon and then we have yegula rip which is your continuation so it's same as domino tier and eye gauge and then we already talked about nebula blasting zone and aurora so in terms of difficulty i would say definitely gunbreaker is the hardest tank i loved all the other ones just because there's a little bit more complexity with uh, using your juncture your drawn juncture and a lot of your abilities uh changes depending on what juncture you pick and you also have no cc pretty much except your limit break so which is kind of sad for a tank you're basically just a dps with a little bit extra tankiness depending on which juncture you pick as well as you do have to press and smash more buttons than other classes so when you when you're like using your combo go something like this you dash and use your double down and then you use your Savage Claw, your Gnashing Fan, whatever it is. And then you use your No Mercy again. Oh, Rough Divide. I know, so I missed that out. And then you basically just smash a lot of your buttons in one go. So you might not prefer that. You might not like that. And you might want to play other class. Another problem with Gunbreak is if you're in the middle of your, your Limit Break, which does give you 20%, 25% damage reduction. But if you're stunned and you can no longer follow a target and they dash away or something, then you can't do any damage to them. And that's just kind of sad. And it just renders your limit break useless. So you want to make sure you stick close to the target when using your limit break. For its pros and cons, it has high damage from all your abilities. You have your double down, you have your gnashing fan, your continuation, your, your burst strike when you use your juncture. You also have your limit break. You also have your no mercy, which gives you damage buff and healing buff. It has really good sustain from your rough divide, which grants you no mercy. 20% extra healing from everything you do. And your drawn juncture, if you select the healer, your continuation abilities will also heal you or if you decide not to you want to pick tank it will create a barrier for you it has fast movement your rough defy actually gives you a movement speed increase so it will, it's almost like you're running without actually running with the no mercy buff you're basically sprinting without actually sprinting which is actually quite useful for running at someone or getting away from someone your limit break actually charges extremely fast while it's just a damaging ability it does stun for the second cast but it's nothing that potent to its cons you have per cc that's pretty much this problem of, of, gun, of gunbreaker you're not necessarily that squishy you are somewhat squishy but as long as you're able to keep your abilities up and use them with the tank juncture then you will be okay but you have no crowd control so if someone wants to get away they can get away if they have a dash away they can dash away and there's nothing you can do to stop them except for jumping straight at them with your rough divide continue to chase them down but you cannot really lock anyone down like a warrior can do with his drag with his bloater you drag someone towards you and then your primal ran you aoe stun everybody or your dark knight you use salted earth you drag everybody into your circle you can't really do that so that is the main downside of gunbreaker so that's it for this video guys i hope this video helped you guys decide what tank pvp class you want to play in ff14 if you agree or disagree with some of my opinions please leave a comment down below and let me know uh, or you have some of your own thoughts you would like to put down regarding with the tanks in pvp uh, so that's it for this video if you found it helpful make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more future final fantasy 14 content so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time goodbye